This is the Pyramidion of Emenhat III, which dates back to the 12th dynasty. The Pyramidion would have been used as the capstone of his pyramid, which is located in Hawara, Egypt. There are inscriptions on all four sides of the Pyramidion, and with the help and translation of Egyptology lessons, we're going to find out what it says on all four sides. So, let's begin. Hello everybody and welcome. I would like to thank Sam Mayfair for this video and introduction of the Pyramidion of Amenemhat III. We will be translating all four sides of this Pyramidion. This is the east-facing side of the Pyramidion and would have been oriented towards the eastern rising sun. Let me explain the images that are on the Pyramidion before we proceed to the hieroglyphs. At the very top you have the winged sun disk, so it is the sun in the center with wings outstretched in protection, and then you have two small Urii cobras on either side that also provide protection. Below the winged sun disk, you have two eyes, which represent the eyes of the deceased, so they can look out into the rising sun. These eyes can be seen much later incorporated onto coffins, where the deceased can look out in towards the eastern rising sun. Below the two eyes, you have the word nefer, there are three of them, which makes it plural, therefore neferu, which is the word for beauty. And below the symbols of beauty, you have the sun disk of Ra. All four symbols provide the translation for the protection of the pharaoh when he sees the beauty of Ra. The sun disk, which is at the center, has hieroglyph extending out horizontally. They actually split onto the right side and the left side, and they contain the titles of the pharaoh. On the right side is the throne name of the king, and it reads, The king of Upper and Lower Egypt, which is the Sejin B, Nima'atre. Basically, it means he who belongs to the Ma'at of Ra, and then given life forever. On the left side is the personal name of the king, and it reads, The son of Re, Amenemhat, which means Amun is in front, given life forever. Below the titles, you have two rows of hieroglyphs. Both rows move in the same direction, from right to left, starting from the top row, from the right. Words spoken. May the sight be open to the king of Upper and Lower Egypt, the lord of the two lands, Nima'atre, so he may see the lord of the horizon and his crossing of the upper sky. May it be given the appearing to the son of Ra, Amenemhat, as a god, lord of everlasting and indestructible. Reading the second row from the right. Words spoken by the sovereign. I have given the beautiful horizon, the two ladies, which are Nechbet and Wajet, the vulture and cobra goddess protectresses of Upper and Lower Egypt. This is known as the Nepti, as the third title or name of the pharaoh. Continuing. And he who takes the inheritance of the two lands, so you may rest upon it, which pleases the sky. Words spoken by the horizon, may you rest upon it, which pleases the sky. The next face will be the north side. It only contains two rows of hieroglyphs. The top row begins from left and ends towards the right. The bottom row begins from the center and breaks off into two directions. The hieroglyphs are identical on either side except for the names of the king. Starting from the left top row, words spoken. Higher is the Ba of the king of Upper and Lower Egypt, Nima'atre, than the height of Orion as it joins the Duat, which is the underworld. ra Horakti, he makes firm the son of Ra of his body, Amenemhat, who is in the midst of the northern starry sky, and Neith, who is content concerning it. Neith is an ancient Egyptian goddess of the pre-dynastic era, a goddess known of the Old Ones who were part of the creation myth of Egypt. She is also very well known for being the mother of the sun god. Continuing to the bottom row, starting from the center and going towards the left. The living Horus, the great of might, the two ladies who inherited the two lands, the golden Horus, enduring of life, the son of Ra, Amenemhat, given life like Ra forever starting once again from the center and going towards the right. The living Horus, the great of might, the two ladies who inherited the two lands, the golden Horus, enduring of life, 
the king of Upper and Lower Egypt, Nimaatre, given life like Ra forever. The next phase will be the western side. This side is by far the most damaged, and we will do our best to read the hieroglyphs that are available. Once again, there are only two rows on this side, and both rows start from the right and going towards the left. Starting from the top row from the right. The Great One, the ribs of Osiris, Lord of the Thinite Gnome, that are under the feet of the good God, the Lord of the two lands and of doing, the son of Ra, of his body, Amenemhat. Ptah, who is south of his wall, the Lord of Truth, and the beloved of Achetaui, which means the living two lands. Continuing to the bottom row from the right. Words spoken by Ptah, given all life, stability, power to the good God, golden Horus, enduring of life, Nimaatre. Words spoken by Sokar Osiris, Lord of all the gods, of, unfortunately the text ends here, due to the damage on the Pyramidion. The final face will be the southern side of the Pyramidion. This side also contains two rows of hieroglyphs only, and both rows begin from the left and end towards the right, starting from the top row on the left. Words spoken by the Imuit. This is an ancient Egyptian god of mummification from the Old Kingdom. He was later absorbed into the cult of Anubis. Continuing, He who is upon his mountain, and behind the king of Upper and Lower Egypt, the lord of doing, Nima Atre, united with the western desert inside the great shrine, the lord of good offering, who is in it, and given it his inheritance, the lord of eternity, and for everlasting. And finally, the bottom row from the left. Words spoken by the Imuit or Anubis. I have given all places, good, pure, and the spirit of the beautiful West to the king of Upper and Lower Egypt, the lord of the two lands, Nimaatre, and commanding him, may you rest upon it. Words spoken by the beautiful West, may you rest upon it. We have reached the end of the video and the translation of the Pyramidian. I understand that the video was long, but I hope you found it stimulating and interesting. I never get tired of learning hieroglyphs. For me, they represent a gateway into a culture that survived for three and a half millennia. And I hope this inspires many to get into the field of Egyptology. If you want to see this object in person, you can visit it at the Egyptian Museum in Cairo. Thank you again to Sam Mayer for sharing this video and providing an introduction. And I wish all my followers and viewers a wonderful day.